Welcome, 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 welcome to the new episode of the Miles High Podcast. This is Miles Monroe Jr., your host. Always thankful when you're able to join me on a new episode. As you know, the goal and vision for this pod is to ed- entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist. Always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. Um, great pod today. Team looks great. Team, everyone's everyone's happy. I'm happy because everyone's happy. I'm also happy because it's a happy time to be happy. Right, babe? Right. Don't roll your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, man, I, uh, uh, I think it's a good pod today. I, I wanted to open up with a question. I have a question for the crew here today, right? Does anyone know how to backflip? No. No. No one knows how to bark flip. Might break up bark in the process. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Anyone else? Anyone else ever wanted to learn how to bark flip? Yeah. And why? Why didn't? Why didn't you learn how to bark flip? Fear probably. Fear of breaking your neck. Yeah. yeah. The fear of like something going wrong, right? Absolutely. Right. And because your mommy say I ain't taking you to no hospital. <laughs> you, you get to <laughs> And you know, I because I always wanted to learn how to backflip, right? But my what stopped me from learning was the fear, the fear of like breaking a bone, landing incorrectly, and something going wrong. And you know, it, it's it's just um, a testament to how uh, how we operate as human beings, right? So I, I there's about six people in this room, five people in this room, and no one no one knows how to backflip. Backflip is something that you can learn to do. No one has even wanted to learn to backflip because of the fear of uh, the, the fear of learning, the fear of breaking something in the process, right? And that reminds me of a video that I saw a number of years ago, right? So there was this little boy that went to his dad and was like, you know, dad, I want to learn how to backflip. And his dad was like, all right, cool. So his dad took him into the backyard and started to go through the process to teach his young son how to backflip. Now, this boy couldn't have been any older than, I'd say, about nine or ten. So, he's a fairly young kid. And his dad, you know, went through these steps of teaching his son how to, uh, how to learn how to backflip. So, the first thing he did was had his son lay flat on the ground uh, on his back and had him put his hands behind his head and then press up on his hands and his legs. So almost in that arch stand, uh, it's a yoga pose. I don't know the name of the pose, but stand up in that arch stand and then, you know, toss his leg over his head, right? So that's the first step that he had him do. And he had him do that a couple of times. And then he moved on to the next step where he had him standing upright. Uh, The father put his arm out, extended uh, right behind his son's lower back. And then he told his son to bend backwards and reach down and try to put his hand on the floor, right? And he did that. His, his father assisted him, like putting his arm on his uh, lower back and guiding him to the floor in that um, arch ha- handstand and then told him to flip his leg over. They did that a few times. His son got comfortable. And then the father stepped away and was like, OK, now reach back yourself, like without my support and put your hands behind your back in the arch stance and then flip your leg behind you. So they went through these steps. Right. And his son uh, got build his confidence in putting his arms back flipping over uh, flipping his legs over his head which was like basically a a backflip without the jump right so he was doing that consistently and quite a number of times until he got super comfortable doing it Um, and then his father felt like okay now you're ready to add the jump right now for uh, for safety reasons his father went and got an old mattress laid the mattress on the ground and uh, told us to understand on the mattress. And then he said, okay, now try to add the jump in your attempt to, you know, do the backflip. So his son tried, you know, the first several times, didn't even like make it over, right? Um, then he continued to try and eventually he started to, you know, do somewhat of a backflip, right? And he got to the point where after he tried, maybe for about five minutes, he got to the point where he was backflipping and almost landing the bad flip, but just not quite, right? He was landing on his, his hands and his knees. So he would do that. He was doing that a couple of times, doing that a couple of times. And consistently, he was landing on his hands and his knees. So he was, doing, he was flipping over, flipping backwards, 
but not landing on his feet. He was landing on his hands and his knees, right? And he that he just consistently did that. So it got you know, and then he would get to the point where he would like almost land on his uh on his on his legs, on his le- on his uh yeah, on his toes. But then he would like stumble and fall and have to brace himself and like it just wasn't a clean backflip. Continued to do that for about two to three minutes and just couldn't just couldn't land the backflip. And he was doing all of this while the mattress was under him. And then the son was like, all right, dad, I think I need to move this mattress. Right? And his dad was like, yo, you sure? Like, there's no more, there's no more protection, there's no more safety net under you. And the son was like, Yeah, I, I think I think I could do it, but I, you know, I, I think I need to move this mattress in order for me to do it. So they re- removed the mattress. His son stood, stood on the on the ground where the mattress was, but he was on the solid ground now. Well, he was on the grass ground, but solid nonetheless. Um, and the very next attempt at the backflip, he landed the backflip. And you could imagine his excitement. He was he was screaming. His dad was him and his dad were hugging. They were high fiving each other because. He literally learned to backflip in about 20 to 30 minutes, right? And went through the process of, of learning from, you know, starting with the baby steps, putting the uh, mattress under him to attempt the backflip, and then ultimately deciding to move the mattress and, you know, landing the back, backflip eventually. Um, and watching that video, right, I, I, again, I watched that quite a number of years ago, but the principle behind that video never left me, right? And... It has all to do with um, the safety net that we usually have, or the safety net that we usually uh, ensure that we have uh, when trying to uh, do things in in life, right? And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about removing the safety net. Um, Because I think that just like that boy who had the protection of his dad in the process of learning to backflip, then had the protection of the mattress while he was attempting to backflip, but in order for him to, to actually be able to do the backflip, right? There was this mental block that he had. And I think it, it, everything that was causing him not to be able to land the backflip was everything that he was banking on to save him, right? Because, you know, at the top of this part, I asked everyone, like, why wouldn't you learn the backflip? And everyone said fear, right? And fear is actually not a bad, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad emotion. Sometimes we need fear to push us past our, our limits, right? To push us, to extend us, to, to give, this, give us that boost of uh, encouragement, that boost of adrenaline that we need uh, in order for us to achieve the things that we want to achieve. But the only way that that's gonna happen is when we start removing the safety nets that, that we have, right? Because we're gonna have to do it even if fear is present, right? And usually fear gives us an, an adrenaline rush. And for that boy who was learning the backflip, I could imagine his anxiousness in attempting to do the backflip, knowing that there was no more safety net, right? There was no more cushion for him to land on just in case he didn't land this backflip. And I think that that fear, you know, inspired him and sparked him to be able to jump high enough, flip over and with enough rotation to land on his feet, you know, knowing or hoping that he, he wouldn't get injured and he was able to accomplish that. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about removing the safety net, right? And this is for persons who, you know, you may want to start a business, but you and, and you're working a nine to five, right? And you're you're doing that simultaneously while trying to start a business. Or persons who uh, you're working a job and you would like to get a promotion or get a higher ranking uh, position in the company that you're working for, but you don't feel comfortable uh, with those attempts of maybe applying or you know seeking that that promotion that you have or just anyone who has a goal of uh of something that you need to decide to do uh and you find yourself fearful of what's on the other end of that decision right don't let your fear uh, stop you from being able to achieve your goals right i always tell people to feed your fear with faith right and I think in in our attempt to achieve our goals and the fear that we experience, there are there there is going to come a time where we have to remove the safety net, right? The, the safety net is going to have to be something that we throw to the wayside because that safety net actually is hindering us or could be hindering us from from achieving the goals that we have set for ourselves. So I, I just wanted you know, and I've I've I, I've had this experience throughout you know the past. Uh, eight nine years of my life and 
I've done, I've, you know, I've just written down a few keys and, and principles that I've used um, in the attempt to move or to remove the safety net. And I wanted to share, uh, share those with, with you guys today. The first one is to plan and strategize. This is the most important step when we're talking about getting to the point where we're going to be able to remove the safety net, right? When I say plan and strategize, I'm talking about you need to map out exactly what it is that you want to do. So you're writing down your vision clearly. Here's what I here, here are the goals that I want to accomplish. Here's the why of what I want what I'm trying to do, right? And then you you strategize, right? So you put strategies towards that vision. Here's how I'm going to do it, right? So the vision is what I want to do. The strategy is here is how I'm going to do it. Here, here are the steps that I think I need to take in order to, to bring this vision to fruition. And then you put a budget, that you, you attach a budget to it. So there's always going to be some resources that are, need, uh, that, that are needed uh, in order for you to achieve whatever goals you've set for yourself. So you create a budget for yourself. Like here's the expenses, here's the amount that I have on hand, the capital. Um, and you know, hopefully if it all goes well, this is the balance that I'm going to end up with at the end of the day. So planning and strategizing is of utmost important, right? And going back to my example with the boy who was, uh, teaching, who wanted to learn how to backflip, right? I think for him, the planning and strategizing phase was actually him in his mind saying, yo, my goal is to backflip, right? I want to learn how to backflip. Now, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to my dad and ask my dad to help me to learn how to backflip, right? I know I can't do it by myself because I've never backflipped before, uh, but I know with the help of my dad, someone that I trust, someone that I respect, and someone that I know has my best interests at heart, uh, he's going to do everything in his power to ensure that I'm able to achieve the goals that I had. And so he, the, the boy planned that and strategized that in his mind, came to his dad, brought it to fruition, and that leads us to the next step, right? You need a personal support system. A personal support system is, 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 is very important, right? And it could be your family. It could be your friends. Uh, it could be uh, strangers, right? People that you don't even know, right? But personal support, a community of people that are going to personally support you in your endeavors are of utmost importance, right? And with, with the kid, going back to the example, you know, his dad was his support system, right? He went to his dad, dad, I want to learn how to, how to backflip. And his dad was like, all right, son, I got you. And his dad was able to co coach him through the steps that he needed uh, to take in order to be able to backflip, right? Um, and this personal support, su support system, like I said, could be friends and family. Um, it could be uh, like donors, right? Because obviously, like I said previously, you know, it's, it, this has to have some type of resource attached to it, right? So you have persons who are willing to assist you, who believe in your vision, believe in what you're trying to do, and they're going to give their personal resources to you, whether it's their finances, their time, uh, their energy, their moral support, their advice. Um, they're, going to, they're going to extend that support to you, right? So they're going to make donations uh, into what it is that you're doing. Um, and, you know, I, I think, like I said, the, the support that we can get from this community uh, can elevate us into achieving the goals that we, we want to achieve. And then thirdly, educate, educate, educate. I cannot say this enough. It is important that we understand the industry that we're in, the market that we're in, uh, the resources that are available within that industry, what others are doing in that industry, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're trying to do um, in, in whatever endeavors you're trying to accomplish. You have to educate yourself, right? So you're going to read books. You're going to speak to persons within the industry who have experience, who have expertise, who've, who've been through the trenches and done a brunt of the work themselves and are able to help you in, you know, being able to maneuver through all the obstacles that you're going to face. Um, and it's just educating yourself, right? And going back to the example again with the kid wanting to learn how to backflip, I think the education that he got was his, his, his dad showing him, well, these are the steps that you take in order to learn uh, this backflip move, move, right? And started off with him laying flat on his back and bracing himself up on his hands and legs and starting to flip over. And then the next step was, okay, the education in this step is 
I'm going to assist you, right? I'm going to donate my energy, my time, my arm into ensuring that you're going to learn this portion of the, the process, but you're going to have my support. And then once you get this down pat, you know, I'm going to step away and allow you to c complete this portion of the, the process yourself, right? And in him attempting the Einstein himself, uh, but not with his, without his father's support. Um, so educating ourselves in each and every endeavor that we, we trying to do. So whether it's, you know, if you want to open a business, if you want to uh, gain a promotion, like you're, you're for, for the person's opening a business, like you're learning, you're doing your industry research, you're doing your market research, you're discovering new tech that's available to, to the, that particular industry or new tech that is about to come on stream. You're researching companies within that industry. Uh, how are how are most companies successful? What failures have been experienced? What fail safe could I could, could I put in place to ensure that I'm I'm successful at this point? Uh, and then you know it's a time and a place, right? So you're doing all of this, and if you're trying to open a business, you're doing all of this while you're working, right? So you're still supporting yourself with your job, your nine to five, and then in your five to nine, or after your nine to five, you know, from five to nine, you're working on your personal business, you're, you're doing all of these extra stuff, going through the process that leads you up to the point where that big decision has to be made, right? And, and once you're educating yourself with, you know, the contents of the market, the contents of the industry, the contents of the tech involved, the resources that it's going to take, uh, then you're able to make, it, make the decisions to remove the safety net. For those who want to get promotions, right? You're finding out information on what what is this job that I, or this position that I want to get? What what does it entail? What's everything that I need to know? Speak to persons already in the position, in your company and other companies. Research, you know, ways that you can advance yourself in the race. How you can you get there faster? Uh, so you're you're doing this research, get educating yourself on all of these facets of the business, all of these uh, factors that are involved in uh, attaining this position that you want to attain. Um, and then, you know, once you are able to educate yourself to the point where you feel confident and you feel satisfied, then you're able to say, all right, time to remove the safety net. And that's when you step out on faith, right? Because the point where you're removing the safety net is where you're most fearful, right? For those of you wanting to start a business, working a nine to five, there comes a point when you, uh, in your business, uh, development where you have to make a decision, like I got to go into this full time. I can't afford to do a nine to five and support my business, right? So I'm going to have to let it, let go of this nine to five and focus on, uh, you know, putting myself a hundred percent all into this business that I, that I, uh, that I want to want to get off the ground and imagine the anxiety that you would have, right? Trying to make that decision. You, you have this secure job that, that, that you are being uh, paid for, you know, you have a lot of benefits, health benefits, insurances, like all of these things that provide a, a cushion for you, right? A safety net, because you're still able to maintain a certain lifestyle, even when you're trying to build a business. Um, but there comes a point where you're going to have to make that decision. And the fear that I'm sure that you're going to experience, it's normal, but you have to trust and believe in uh, the plan and strategies that you put in place. Trust and believe in the support system that you have, right? The people that are around you, that are there coaching you, cheering you on, and want to support you in these endeavors. And then uh, have confidence in the education that you've, uh, that, you've, you, that you've given yourself, that you've received, right? That you've researched, uh, you've, you've found out uh, strategies, information, all these things within the, within the industry, within the job, the things that you want to do. Uh, and then you're stepping out on faith, okay? I'm going to make this decision to remove the safety net because I truly feel like the next level of success in, in our lives comes where we, we have no choice but to put, fear, put, put faith over fear. We're going to be fearful, absolutely. We're going to be scared in the process. It's going to be difficult for us to figure out, uh, is this the right time, right? Am I ready for this? Right, and we're not always going to be confident, like a hundred percent confident. Sometimes, right? Sometimes we're going to need those individuals around us to push us and to tell us we're ready, even if we don't believe it. Believe it ourselves, uh, but we have to continue to stay positive uh, and continue to push ourselves. And once that safety net is removed and we attempt the backflip, we have to know that we have done 
everything that we have needed to do at this point in order to complete this backfill, right? So allow, allow that fear, allow that anxiety, allow all the uncertainties that lie ahead to push you towards not failing. Now, I have to say at this point, it doesn't mean that we're not going to fail, right? Failure is inevitable. Failure is something that should be expected. But how you remain successful is ensuring that we don't allow fear or we don't allow failure to stagnate us. We don't allow failure to, to cause us to quit, right? Failure is just a thing that, you know, I said this in, a, in, a, in one of my previous, uh, previous episodes, failure is just an event, right? It's something that we experience just like success, right? Uh, but it's not who we are. It's, it's not a characteristic of, of who we are as individuals. So if we fail, when we fail, we accept the failure, we learn from it, and we attempt again. Because us failing is us learning a way not to do it, right? And so we try it a different way. We tweak our strategies, we, we, we revise our plans, uh, we go back to our support system, and we try to do all of these things to really hone in on what, need, what we need to do as individuals once we decide to jump out there, jump out without a safety net to be successful. It kind of reminds me of when the reporter asked Giannis a couple months ago about if he thought his season was a failure. And he said, you know, why, why are you looking at it like that? It's steps to success. Um, I'm not a failure, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I think we have, to, we have to understand, like, even in our, the, even in the process, on, or, or even in the journey through the process of trying to achieve the things that we want to achieve, like, we're going to fail, right? And going back to, to my example, like, the, the boy was failing, right? He was attempting the backflip, not landing the backflip, right? Landing on his hands and knees. And that was a consistent thing. So he was consistently failing, understanding that, yo, I can't allow the fact that I'm, I, I, I keep attempting to backflip, not able to land this backflip, but I'm not going to quit because I know I can do it because I understand the ability that I have. I, I can feel it in me. Like I have this backflip in me. I have the success to land this backflip within me, I can feel it. And I'm going to push myself past the point of, of me being fearful and saying, okay, I'm going to remove the safety net, right? And, and just going past it. And so like Giannis is a good example as well. They were ranked number one in the East, right? Face the Heat, who we got a Heat fan in the other day who was super excited. <laughs> <laughs> Face the Heat, uh, who were eighth seed um, uh, in the East. And the number one seed got beat by the eight seed, right? And Giannis didn't allow that to deter his confidence, right? He understood like, yo, failure is a part of life. We're all going to fail. But I think it's how we respond to that failure, how we bounce back from that failure. So you're going to fail. Understand that and accept that. Failure is inevitable, right? But don't dwell on it. Learn from it and figure out what needs to be done and how you need to do it in order for you to not uh, experience that failure again. Um, like I can remember for me, um, what really hit home for me was when my, when my parents actually passed, right? I think my, you know, I moved home to work with my dad, was doing well. I felt I was doing well, right? Was, was managing everything and felt confident in what I was doing. Uh, my dad was pushing me to do more and I was like, ah, yeah, you know, I, I'll attempt to do more. I'll do a little more. But I think for me, my dad was my safety net, right? Everything that he was doing, the, per the type of person that he was, the uh, attention that he, that he grabbed, the, his, uh, his, his smarts, right? His, his, uh, his business savvy, like all of these things I knew that he had and that he uh, had accomplished, uh, I was falling back on, right? And I wasn't pushing myself. Um, and, you know, I just saw, I, I, you know, in hindsight, I realized that, I was using him more as my safety net than anything else, right? So once that safety net was removed, right? Once my parents had passed and it was just me, right? And I, I was like, all right, I gotta figure this out. I don't have this safety net behind me or under me now to, to bounce ideas off of or to give me affirmations that, that I may need to, uh, to, to, get the, uh, to get things off that, you know, I may be confident in my mind about, but, you know, realistically, I'm really not that confident about, like, actually doing them, right? I had to do it myself. It reminds me of um, the Dark Knight movie, right? No, the Dark Knight series, right? I'm a big Dark Knight fan, the Batman that's Christian Bale, 
is the best bot mine ever. It's just my opinion. If you disagree, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, this, this, this is my opinion. I'm liable to my opinion. But it's fact also, though. <laughs> Christian Bale is the best bot mine. It's neither here nor there. The Dark Knight, uh, right. the Dark Knight is the best movie. Top, top two best movies ever created. Well, the, one, the one with, with the Joker. Uh, with uh, Heath, Heath, Heath Ledger, Ledger as the Joker. Yes. But my, my, my point is, in The Dark Knight Rises, right? And this is the movie with, um, with Bane as the, as the villain. Uh, Christian Bale's character, Bruce Wayne, was put into a prison, a pit, uh, a pit on the underground, right? And the only way in and out of this prison was uh, to climb out of this hole from deep underground um, to get out, right? Now, Christian Bale was... Uh, preparing himself, right? So he was planning and strategizing on on how we, how what he needed to do to get out. So he needed to, to get stronger. He needed to, uh, you know, work out, get himself in physical shape in order to make this climb. Uh, he had the support of uh, a gentleman under there who I, I assume was a doctor of some kind, and you know, brought him back to the health that he needed uh, to to be able to attempt to escape. Uh, give, was giving him advice through the process and recommendations through the entire process. And then he, uh, you know, educated himself on, like, what he needed, right? And so there was a rope that was tied uh, that, that was by the, uh, by, by, the, uh, by the hole that you could climb out of. So Christian Bale would tie the rope around his race and attempt to climb, right? So he tried to climb a, a few times, wasn't successful because there was a point in the climb where he had to jump from one, one step uh, on one side of the the hole uh, of the pit hole to the next side, right? Um, he wore the, the rope around him as a safety net uh, to ensure that he doesn't kill himself because it was a really high climb and if you missed the jump, chances are you, you were going to break something or probably, you know maybe even die. And he tried this, you know, tried to escape quite a few times, wasn't able to to make it, failed each time. So there was this, there was this one time he was talking to the guy. Uh, who was helping him out in the prison. And the guy was like, uh, he asked him something along the lines of like, why? He, he asked him, are you afraid to die? Or, or like something along those lines. Can't remember exactly. And Christian Bale was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have fear, right? I don't, I don't, I'm not fearful of dying. I'm fearful of not being able to make it out of this prison, right? And the guy responded like, man, you need fear. Like you can't, you can't not be fearful, like you have to embrace that fear, right? You can't, you have to do it scared because an attempt like this, like you need that adrenaline rush that fear gives you to give you that push that you need, right? Because at that point, it's flight, or, it's flight or fight, right? And I think Christian Bale was trying to, to do the flight, but have a little safety net. Like, let me tie this rope around my waist just in case because I ain't trying to die, right? Obviously. And the guy was like, no, nah, you can't do it like that. Because there was someone else that did it, you know, prior to you, the only person that made it out. And the way that they did it was they didn't use the rope. So Christian Bale on his next attempt, you know, decided not to use the rope. And that fair definitely pushed him. Obviously, it's a movie. Obviously, he was going to make it, right? But the premise and the principle behind it was that he, um, he w didn't use the rope and allowed that fair to push him. And, and that's, what, that's what we need. In order, that's what we. That's why we removed the safety net in order for us to allow that fear to push us. So, for, you know, like I said, for me, it was my my parents passing and me realizing that man, there is no more safety net for me. Like I got to get it done, and I was I was confused. I wasn't confident. I was fearful of like, man, what is next year gonna look like? What are the next five years gonna look like? Um, but you know sometimes we we don't even understand the abilities that we have right the confidence that we should have or the preparation that we've been experiencing the, the that entire time right through our planning and strategizing through our community that we have with our personal support system and then through the education and experiences that we've been getting over the years right and it should be easy at that point for us to step out on faith and feed our feed our affairs with faith um, so in removing the safety net, like I, I think if you if you if you take calculated risks, right, and, and attempt to achieve our goals by really setting out to 
not do it haphazardly and just do it on a whim of it, but like really focusing in on this entire process of planning and strategy, uh, personal support system, having the right people around us that are, that are there to support us, both financially, emotionally, uh, physically, spiritually, like all of these, uh, our community who are supposed to be there to, to pull us along, to carry us along, and then educating ourselves within our industries, our markets, and all of that, and then stepping out on faith. Um, and, you know, for me, I think once I understood that process, like it, it's, it's much easier for me now, right? So I have, you know, removing safety nets for me is almost like necessary, right? And it's something that I do on a consistent basis because I understand the principles behind it. I understand the process behind it. And I'm super confident when I get to the point of the decision that needs to be made. All right. So I hope that, you know, with that, I'm able to, sh I was able to share uh, some good insight on, on how to, to look at removing a safety net, how to look at uh, making these difficult decisions that we're scared of that make us afraid, uh, but being able to push past that fear and feed that fear with faith. Okay. This brings us to our milestone segment of the episode. Um, my favorite segment where I get to leave you with some, some tangible take home advice, uh, for you to apply to your lives. And today's, uh, today's milestone is pretty simple, right? My, the milestone for today is do it scared. Fear is inevitable. Fear is something we're going to experience, in, especially in times where we don't know what the future holds, right? Do it scared. Do it afraid. And just continue to remember that even if you're afraid, the fear that you have, continue to feed that with faith. And your faith is, is eventually going to outweigh your fear if you, if, you, if you truly believe in what it is that you're trying to do. So do it scared, okay? Don't, don't allow fear to stagnate you. Don't allow fear to allow you not to move. Just move forward, even if you're afraid. All right? And that brings us to the end of this episode. Love this episode. I love talking about topics like this, especially when I'm able to pull my personal experiences into the recommendation and strategies that I'm offering uh, for you to apply to your lives. All may not work, but hopefully you're able to pull one or two things out of it uh, to see if it can work for you as well. All right. So the goal on this uh, part, as always, is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitation that you may think exists, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right. You guys stay blessed. <laughs>